Baseboard heaters. You see them everywhere, so they must be great, right? Well, the truth is, not all baseboard heaters are the same. And to be honest, even though they might be great at drying wet hats and mittens, this heating source leaves a lot to be desired. In this video, we're diving into the real pros and cons of baseboard heaters. We'll talk about the true financial costs and how they might affect your health and the planet. Baseboard heaters do have a place in some homes though, and we'll talk about that towards the end. But before we start, hit that subscribe button to see more sustainable home improvement videos just like this one. Now, without further ado, let's dive in. Baseboard heaters offer heat through an electrical heating element very much similar to how a toaster heats up. They sit about three quarters of an inch above the floor to allow heat and air to circulate around the unit. These heaters heat a house room by room, so they don't require a central heating system or expensive ductwork. When it comes to the sustainability of this heat source, electric baseboards reflect wherever your power comes from. If your home is powered by solar panels, then you're using clean and renewable energy. But it's a different story if your home is powered by a nearby coal power plant. One of the best features of baseboard heaters is their 100% efficiency. This means that 100% of the electricity consumed is used to produce heat. Compare this up to 300% for a heat pump, 95% for a high efficiency gas furnace, and 80% for a modern oil furnace. Electric baseboard heaters come in two different voltage connection varieties. The, the most common is a 120 volt connection that can be easily connected to a 20 amp circuit in your home. Electric baseboards are not the same as hot water baseboard heating, which is more commonly called hydronic heating. Yes, these heaters sit along your baseboards, but they offer a different type of heat and varying efficiencies. Hydronic baseboard heaters are usually connected to a central heating system that can be powered by electricity, gas, oil, and even wood. When people say baseboard heaters, they're typically referring to electric baseboard heaters that heat room by room. Baseboard heaters boast a low upfront cost, mostly because they don't require ducting. Expect to pay about $30 to $250 per unit and as much as $600 to install it if the wiring isn't already in place. Electric baseboard heaters may be cheap to buy up front, but they can be costly to heat a home, especially if your home is a bit big and drafty. All right, so let's take a quick example. Let's say you purchase three 1000 watt electric baseboard heaters to heat a few rooms in your house. The three 1000 watt heaters consume three kilowatt hours of electricity every hour. If your heaters are on six hours per day, they're pulling 18 kilowatt hours of electricity every day or 540 kilowatt hours of electricity per month. At the average US rate of 13 cents per kilowatt, that's $70 on your monthly utility bill. Now keep in mind, each baseboard heater only effectively heats the room it's in. So a home with six rooms might have heaters adding $24 each to your monthly bill. And in cold climates, heaters might be running for 24 hours a day. We're not gonna give you the math on that, but you can probably see how quickly these costs add up. Do thermostats work with baseboard heaters? This is a great question because there are some relatively new programmable thermostats that give baseboards major help in terms of their efficiency and comfort. Those old thermostats that are attached to baseboards should never be used since they're really imprecise and they can waste precious energy. At the very least, use a basic wall-mounted thermostat. Better yet, opt for a smart or a programmable thermostat that sets timers or even learns your habits for extra savings. Some of the best smart thermostats on the market are made by Misa, Sinope, and Stelpro. Like we just learned, electric baseboard heaters can use a lot of energy. Not only does this mean a higher utility bill, but it also means your home has a larger carbon footprint. The good thing about electric baseboard heaters is that they run on electricity rather than oil, gas, or other fossil fuels. This means you're using whatever energy source powers your home, whether it's a coal-fired power grid or solar panels on your own roof. Since electric baseboard heaters are so common, they must be perfectly healthy to use, right? Now, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but these heaters are far from the best option for a homeowner 
who's putting health at the top of their list. A 2009 study found that kids who live in homes with electric baseboard heaters showed higher rates of lung inflammation than homes with forced air or hot water radiant heat. Lung inflammation can make asthma symptoms worse and can even make it harder to recover from respiratory sickness like the cold, flu, and other more dangerous diseases. That same study showed that the baseboards brought increased levels of dust mites and formaldehyde, which are the likely lung irritating culprits. Dust can damage not only your lungs, but also decrease the efficiency of your heater. So be sure to wipe and vacuum your baseboard heaters on a very regular basis. Now, also biologically, humans prefer heat that comes from radiant sources like the sun. So baseboards also fall short compared to other heating types available on the market today. And now that we've answered some of the most common questions about electric baseboard heaters, let's wrap it up in a neat little package with the pros and cons. Now, what are the pros of baseboard heaters? Well, they do have a low upfront cost for purchase and installation. They are powered by electricity rather than fossil fuels. They're a quiet heating option with no blowing or gurgling noises that you might get with ducting or a furnace. Baseboard heaters can be made more efficient with smart thermostats. And lastly, electric baseboard heaters can be used for spot heating colder areas of your home, making it a great secondary source of heat. Now for the bad news. Baseboard heaters get extremely hot, so they can be a burn hazard around flammable objects and small children. They're not an efficient or cost-effective way to heat large homes or older homes that might be drafty. And lastly, baseboard heaters don't have built-in fans and aren't designed to circulate air. This makes them a bad option for larger rooms you might find yourself buying several units to heat all of the rooms in a house. So when does it make sense to install electric baseboard heaters? The pros and cons of baseboard heaters might make it hard to understand if they're a good or bad option for a home. The answer isn't a simple yes or no, but there are situations where baseboards do make sense. Electric baseboard heaters work best as a secondary source of heat for a home, but what would you choose for your primary source of heat? You want something that's efficient, something that can heat large spaces, and something that preferably heats and cools. A heat pump, for example, should check all of these boxes. Whether you choose a ductless mini split heat pump for the large open spaces of your home, or maybe you want to install ducting to push that air into all the separate rooms of your house. Ducting can be a costly installation, so be sure to choose a skilled HVAC expert who will take the time to get to know your family's needs and the ins and outs of your home. Normally, a secondary source of heat is only necessary for homes in colder climates. If you're in a mild climate, we suggest using a heat pump for heating and cooling your home. Now, we'd like to know this. Is your home heated with baseboard heaters? Is it your primary or secondary source of heat? Let us know in the comments below or feel free to ask a question about anything covered in this video. And don't forget to check us out at buildwithrise.com for more videos and daily articles to help make your next home improvement project a sustainable one. Thanks for tuning in guys and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. For more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe by clicking the button below and also check out buildwithrise.com, the only place to turn any home improvement project into a sustainable one.